This is the Galax RTX 3080 HD One Click OC. And the SG here means serious gaming. So if you plan to be a non-serious gamer with this card, then it might just leave you. Hey everyone, Mukul here. And this time I have this super massive graphic card, which is quite heavy, but thank God you won't be the one lifting it. God bless that poor PCI Express slot. In this nice box, you first see a very nice RGB support bracket and then a graphic card, some cables to hook the card with this extra clip on fan which goes over the backplate of the card, but it had some problems of its own, which I will share shortly. The card in this angle looks like a gun, but it's not. So stop playing with your expensive computer components. The card is about 33 centimeters long and eats up approximately three slots of your case. The many wafers of the huge heat sink are easily visible and the three RGB fans, which are ARGB compatible, have this typical Galax design over them. The backplate also looks nice and not too tacky in my opinion. There are two headers on the right side of the card. One of them is to support the extra clip-on fan and the other one goes inside uh, one of the RGB headers on your motherboard. My Founders Edition FE looks tiny in front of it, but subjectively speaking, I like the look of the FE Edition too, but you probably can't get one, so yeah. The specs of the card are quite known to the whole world by now and it comes with three display ports and one HDMI port on it. The clip-on fan sadly doesn't have any lighting on it, which is a huge bummer as most of the people still don't vertical mount their graphic cards and the idea of having an extra fan on top which could have also lit and be visible would have been wonderful. If you use a mid-tower case like in my case, the Cooler Master MB520 with an ASUS TUF X570 Gaming Plus motherboard on it, then you will definitely need to figure out which PCI Express slot you are going to choose for this huge card. For example, if I install it on the top PCIe slot, then there is no way I could put the on-clip fan as it was brushing without a toothpaste against these four memory modules and there was no way to get the fan clipped on. And if I choose to put the card on the bottom PCIe slot, then the headers and the wires of the other components were putting pressure on the card due to which it was only fitting inside the slot with some pressure on it which I'm never going to be comfortable with. I mean, why don't you imagine being in a relationship with some pressure on you with that constant pressure to perform? Yeah, that will suck deeply. And not only that, to install it on the lower PCIe slot, I had to remove the SSD heatsink and that means the SSD in that M.2 slot is forever suffocated below the massive heatsink of the card. Also, by placing it on the bottom PCIe on this motherboard, I would also lose the extra RGB header on the motherboard. So against all the odds, mm, well, I gave up the idea of using the bottom PCIe slot and also gave up the idea of using the extra clip on fan on the card by installing it on the top PCIe slot. And I actually felt very slightly bad and that's mainly because of the reason uh, that the extra clip on fan isn't RGB or lit in any scenario. I mean, if it was, I would have at least felt a little more bad about the inability to use it. But hey, no lights, no regrets. The amount of RGB lights from these RGB lit fans were ample and they helped me glow in pure RGB. I mean, help the card glow in pure RGB. And Galax still doesn't know about what's your game. The RGB support bracket, which by the way looks excellent and asks the same question the second time which the card had already asked. I mean, they are really determined to know what's your game here that made you buy this card. I did not install the RGB support bracket during my test as the card wasn't sagging much or anything. But if you don't mind the overall appeal of more RGB in your case, then this could just be the best thing which could have happened uh, to you and your RGB dreams. And it supports ARGB lighting, so it will run in sync too with your PC overalls lighting, which is actually yay! So yeah, that's all for today. Uh, let's see how the card performs in gaming first, and then we shall see how it did in a few of the GPU-based printing applications too. In Battlefield 5 on ultra settings with DLSS off, the 1080p performance uh, hovered around 135 FPS and with 1440p at 114 FPS and at 4K at around 70 FPS. I mean, I don't know why I read all those numbers because you can clearly read them. In control at high settings with RTX high, there was more than twice the performance boost at 4K with DLSS on and about 10% in 4014p from uh, DLSS off to DLSS on. Doom Eternal at Ultra Nightmare settings with and without resolution scaling mode at 1440p and 4K saw a similar boost of approx 
Metro Exodus at ultra settings with RTX and DLSS on stayed around 80 FPS at 4K and 133 FPS at 1440p. The Shadow of the Tomb Raider saw a decent boost with RTX and DLSS on and stayed around 100 FPS at 4K and about 166 FPS at 1440p with RTX and DLSS on. The average peak temperatures at full load always stayed around 65 degrees Celsius or 149 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty impressive and shows how brilliant the card is at cooling the GPU die. I mean, die. GPU die. I have thoroughly compared the card's performance for Cyberpunk 2077 in a more elaborated video. You can hop on to there by clicking on the cards above or by clicking on the link in the description below. The RTX 3080 has about 50% more CUDA cores as compared to the RTX 3070. So it will be interesting to see about how much uh, better those cores are in terms of GPU rendering performance. Checking the Blender Optics rendered test results, the RTX 3080 is about 40% faster in both Fishy Cat and BMW 27 tests, which actually justifies its 40% more price for those who prefer rendering on the GPU rather than just on the CPU. The almost same result is replicated in CUDA rendering too, as the performance varies from 30 to 40% from uh, RTX 3070 to the RTX 3080. Now because the Cinebench R15 test runs at a way lower resolution than 1440p or even Full HD, the RTX 3080 performs even worse than the 3070 in this test. So yeah, don't buy this card for rendering anything below 1440p at least, including uh, real-time 3D viewports or games. The same file which took about 15.5 seconds to render in Keyshot 9 took about 11 seconds with the RTX 3080. Some more GPU-based rendering benchmarks like V-Ray, Octane and Redshift also saw about 40% performance boost on the RTX 3080 from the RTX 3070. And because of the more VRAM at GDDR6X bandwidth, the RTX 3080 was able to render my Premiere test scene uh, 8 seconds faster from the RTX 3070. Not a huge gain though. The cooling on this card is so brilliant that the peak temperatures never actually crossed above 65 degrees under full load and the max wattage the card hovered around was about 320 watts. The peak locks hardly crossed the 2 GHz mark though and mostly sustained between 1.9 to 2 GHz. Well, I also tried moderate overclocking on the card and got a 3% higher score quite easily in the 3D mark test. But I'm pretty sure there is a lot of room to overclock it even further and a lot of serious overclockers will be able to push the limit of the card even further without a sweat. The standard noise levels were quite audible but were fine. But just don't dare to run this card fans anywhere close to 100% use unless you just love the idea of listening to a small genset as you work or game on your system. So in many of the tests here, the 40% more cost from the RTX 3070 to 3080 is quite justifiable. And especially if you can get the RTX 3080 close to its maximum retail pricing. For example, in India at least, the AIB partner cards from ASUS, MSI, etc. for the RTX 3080 costs a whooping 60% more amount uh, than the RTX 3070's pricing. I mean, no amount of fans or heat sinks can really justify that insane hike in the price. The RTX 3070 AIB partner cards start at 50,000 Indian rupees, which is 666 US dollars, and the RTX 3080 AIB partner cards can cost around about 80,000 rupees, which is about uh, 1,050 US dollars. I mean, we are already under the burden of paying huge amount of import taxes, and these prices make absolutely no sense to me personally. I was just lucky I was uh, able to find a Founders Editions RTX 3070 for about 44,000 Indian rupees, but really the pricing of the AIB partner cards make absolute no sense to me. And there's actually no single entity to blame here for these extreme hike in prices. So unless and until your life depends on these cards or you just have an extra amount of money to shed on these cards right now, I really don't see any other sensible reason to go out and upgrade to uh, these graphic cards at this moment. But if you're someone who is building a fresh system, a new build, then you really have no other option to shed out this amount of money for the RTX 3080 right now. Because if you don't have a system, you don't have a system. And going out and buying a RTX 2000 series GPU right now, unless and until you get a crazy deal on them, uh, well, it actually doesn't make any sense right now, especially after the recent launch of uh, the RTX 3060 Ti, which is extremely close to the RTX 3070 performance. 
You can also check my other videos uh, where I thoroughly benchmark uh, the RTX 3070 and 3080 with the Cyberpunk 2077. And I've also made a dedicated review on the RTX 3070 Founders Edition card. I will post their links in the description below and also you can see them when the video ends. So yeah, stay safe humans and keep those CUDA cores safe too. That's all for today. Mewbot out.